What's up everybody? This is the Well Machine coming back to you guys with another video. As you guys can see behind me, we got a couple of pieces of equipment we're going to get to here in a little bit. So we're going to be comparing the Titanium MiG 170 spool gun, which is a 50 inch spool gun, and versus the Longevity 140 spool gun. I can't remember how many amps it is, um, but we're going to compare them both in a little test. We got some quarter inch aluminum. That quarter inch aluminum. And then we got half inch aluminum right here. Or not half inch, I'm sorry. Eighth inch aluminum right there. We're going to do a nice little test on that right there. I'm going to bring you guys in closer so you guys can see more and we can talk more about it. All right. So, first things first, we're going to talk about this one. This is. Let's zoom in. There you go. All right, so this is the Longevity MIG Welder 140. We had this in previous videos. I have it right there. And um, so we use this for a lot of aluminum welding. The spool gun, it's a good spool gun. It's bulky, but I mean, it's not bad. I wouldn't mind trying the the other one, but this is a good spool gun. If you guys are starting out and you're on a budget, this would be the perfect machine. I think all together is like 700 bucks. Now, let's get to it. We're gonna go ahead and get to it and do our first weld. Uh, generally, I probably would preheat it, but being what we're doing, it don't matter. All right, guys, ready? We're gonna just go this way. Ready and go. y'all oh you get it you get it all right y'all so i see if you guys can see this this is what the longevity did on the eighth inch that's what it did on the eighth inch okay you see it see it. yeah you should see it now really good penetration no undercut nothing like that really good penetration really so now I'm going to show you how good the penetration was. If you look at the back side of this, and this is going to tell the story right here. You see all of that? You see all uh, you see all that right there? It looks like you can see like a weld from the other side. That tells you right there that this has good penetration on eighth inch aluminum. All right, so we're back right now. We're about to do the quarter inch. Right now we got the preheated flame right here because it's quarter inch. We want to make sure that it's up to a good temperature so it will melt in because this machine is only rated for I think eighth inch nothing more than eighth inch for a spool gun either eighth inch to yeah eighth inch um, but unless you preheat then it it should be able to weld more but multiple passes don't forget that for aluminum is a heat sink so it takes in the heat and it does what it needs to do which is awesome just go real slow, and like I said, it's a small piece, so they don't need to take that much preheat. Okay, so it started doing better towards the end, and you guys are gonna probably be like, man, I don't want to buy that. Well. All 
All right, guys. Now we're done. Let's zoom out and double tap it. Okay. All right, guys. So as you guys can see, as you guys can see, this is quarter inch aluminum with the longevity spool gun, which is not bad. If you preheat it more, I was doing circular motions, but I mean, if you pull, it'll probably be do a little bit better. I just like to weave a little bit. Um, that's why it looks like that. But if you preheat it, it works better than if you don't preheat. Because if you don't preheat, I mean, that's the way it looks now. But if you don't preheat, that's what it will look like. Because it's too cold, it's thick material, and uh, with aluminum, you're going to have to preheat depending on your thickness. Eighth inch, eighth inch, you can get away with not preheating um because it's just eighth inch and i mean i would preheat the beginning because of how it looks see as you as you can tell right there it's kind of cold and as i went it got warmer or hotter and warmed up and it welded better so preheat more than what i did but just not overkill with preheat but there is a weld we can try to break it Focus. That's what it did. No cracks, no breaks, nowhere. I don't even think we can bend it back the other way. We're gonna see. Okay. Sorry guys, life went out. I'm gonna be here. Alright guys, about to crack it. Well something cracky. This is our little harbor press. Wow, look at that. Six tons of pressure. Focus, there we go. Six tons of pressure and no cracks. No cracks. The material actually cracked before the weld cracked. And this is with the Longevity 140. So this is a good um, make, uh, spool gun welding machine. Blah, blah, blah. Investment. Investment for you guys for just 700 bucks and that comes with the spool gun and the machine and the material crack oh wait okay i do see a little crack across the top of the weld where i would say it's the material the material cracked but the weld itself if this focuses there you go see that the weld itself is good so this is a good investment machine and i would go say if you even went further than um let me zoom into me okay and i'll do a brief talk about this machine guys and then i'll do a compilation all right so guys this is a good machine i still got the machine i stand by the machine the only downside to this machine is well Depending on the way you look at it. It's analog, which is not a problem as long as you can get it set right. Um, so don't be a, if you're a weekend welder, then you just got to play with it. But if you got more experience, you can set it properly. Preheat. Anything over a quarter inch, preheat definitely. Um, see what else. The MIG gun, I mean, it's good. Just I wouldn't run flux core through it because after a while it gets clogged up. And you had to change the liner because of the shavings from the flux. Um, the other downside, the major downside to this machine is it is too heavy. It is way too heavy. I mean, if you think about having to pick this thing up and setting it down, picking it up, setting it down, it's heavier. Compared to the Harbor Freight welder machine, that machine is a way heavier. I'll put the weight of that machine, of the longevity, in right here it's gonna pop up okay and then the weight of the tight titanium 
Okay. But uh, that's the only downside. Other than that, the gun is good. The spool gun is kind of cheap plastic. And just be wary of it. Treat it like if it was gold. Because if you drop that, you'll probably break something. Just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. But it's a good machine. Good machine for MIG welding, flux core. I did a whole trailer build with that machine with flux. Uh, and spool gun, I welded a tra trailer door back on with that. I preheated it. I think it was like 3 8 And I did a full pin weld on it with aluminum. And I'll pop the video up or the, the tag somewhere up here. But overall, that is a great machine. Um, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. But unless you guys are trying to put out a show. But uh, it's a good machine. So that's something I would definitely keep on hand. But yeah, it's a good machine.